our bees nationwide, worldwide, dying off. And I just doing research on my own and also have a grant a uh, couple of years ago from a share grant. I do some bee research, 15,000, took me a year when I finish it and uh, I have very sad findings. Our bee problems is purely man-made. We like it or not, that's the story. And we cannot unmade it. But we have to live with it. And uh, the easiest way to rid of the problem, all of us, we have to get together and breeding our own bees. The bees problem come from south with the packages, things, and everything else. Uh, uh, pollinators, moving bees, one corner to other corner of the world, okay? And dropping down the disease, left it here with the bees, and we, our bees is taken up, and we constantly fight against that situation, right? And uh, pa package cost, Pollination cost, everything will go up. If I uh, can tell you that we are buying yearly in New Jersey 5,000 packages every year. 5,000 packages come with the drones. I try to approach several uh, uh, package makers in South. I like to buy packages but no drones and practically left on me. I said, what do you think? How you can do that? That's very easy. That's a very easy uh, uh, beekeeper techniques. But with the packages, we're getting the drones, and the drones is 100% queen. Therefore, we get the package, and they drones mating with our bees, and we constantly swimming against the flow. We cannot go no place. Because the bees, infected by the southern doors, the drones, and we, we are in, a, in and our bees is dying, period, from the diseases and whatever we get. <coughs> uh, 5,000 package. How much is the package today, Sam? How much, how much is the package today? 110. 110. Can you help me out? Uh, <laughs> 5,000 package. I have a better one. You everybody can see that. <laughs> Five thousand packages equal. Help me out here. Fifty-five and four zeros. Fifty-five and four zeros. Half a million dollars. Yep. Half a million dollars. Ah, I guess a good looking house. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, half a million dollars every year from our beekeeper pocket goes to the southern beekeeper pocket. All right. But in the 10 years, how much is that? Five million dollars. What we can do with five million dollars? New Jersey beekeeper. <laughs> 80% of them do not survive the winter. Wow. Yeah. So that's that is universal studies, it's not to get from the age. Right? <coughs> so if you make a dishes and we ended up with 20% and how much was the one package? Wow. Alright? That's funny, getting funnier. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, only $5 million only for 10 years. If we buy in 10 years, 5,000 packages, we should have 50,000 plus packages in New Jersey. We are also importing 12 to 15,000 colony for pollination. Wow. 
every year. How many was that? 12 to 15,000 every year. $80, $90, $100 per high. So here we are. The reason I'm here, because I know these numbers, and I'm more aggravated than you are. <laughs> I know these numbers, and these numbers don't disappear. They will stay there. That's the reason I decided, Charlie and Kevin, a year ago or so, they made it a YouTube. camera, YouTube, yeah. I see on the YouTube, I see a couple of versions of it, and the simplest way somebody can multiply their bees, but Charlie and Kevin and the other people who put together to keep our bees alive and do not import bees. I, only one person probably in New Jersey, maybe on the East Coast, against the importation of bees. Importation of bees is nothing but also importing bee diseases. So we, we are again against the river flow and try to swim and try to go ahead and be the one of it. So what else is... That's in my basic aggravation. <laughs> Go a little bit. I like to go talk about a little bit the queen breeding. And the queen breeding is the highest level of the beekeeping, usually requiring who's going this business <coughs> have four years entomology college and a couple of years under the commercial queen producer. The smallest queen producers have to produce as at least 10,000 things a year to stay in a business and pay the car payment, the truck payment. The biggest producer, big, big, bigger producer is uh, producing a half million things and they're shipping worldwide. Right? Here comes one thing. The number is went up, the quality goes down. So I'll be buying twins underdeveloped and undermated. I'm doing this research on my own, and uh, two years ago I bought 25 twins. That was the most striking situation, but what I did, uh, six, seven hundred dollars, I already prepared the nooks, I put it in, and I'm checking every 10 days. Within six weeks, all of the queens was superseded. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. The money, six time, days. within six days, six weeks, six, 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 weeks. weeks. Yeah. six weeks. All of them were superseded. Yeah. Now the superseder is come late in this part of the year and late August and September. Those bees cannot make it. Okay? That is out of the time. They cannot overwinter. Even you put in the money, time, effort, they still not survive. Okay? So that's for that. Well, one more thing. That was the Queens a year ago. Accidentally, other beekeeper is do the, doing the same research than I did. And this year, I'm breeding Queens, and for queen breeding, for a meeting, looks I needed bees. So I figured that it's a uh, make sure I have enough bees for the breeding, I mean, uh, uh, mating nooks. I bought 20 packages. Now, other beekeeper in South Jersey did the same thing, but we never talk about it. I know him very well. So I set up a, a 20 packages. When I get it, uh, next day I install them and I get three dead queens. So I ended up already 17. Four days later, I went in and I checked them. I take, want to take out the uh, empty cells, the queen cells. I find four more. So seven is out. And uh, during that rest of the season, some of them turn to drone layer, some of them turn to worker layer. So right now, I have eight. I'm 
not lucky. I lost only 60% of it. Mm -hmm. okay. They most likely survived the winter. But we have to be, these data, this information, what I went through, okay, uh, encouraged me to be here, talk to you, and only one way can get rid of the problem, every of you, able to produce their own multiplying or increasing your beehive. Very simple. Uh, Kevin uh, and uh, you guys, last year they put in a, uh, YouTube, that video, I looked at most of them, and uh, that is encouraging me to come here and talk about it a little bit more. That's an excellent job, first steps, and many other bee clubs ask me to do the same thing, but the reason I'm here, but they don't do nothing about it. So how can we can talk with, with increasing beehives if you don't do nothing about it? So you, 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 you went to the place and, 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 and they try it, and uh, I like to refine that part of it. Number one, when you, when you decided to make an increase, you have to decide every this year what you make in next year. Okay? That is, we call that selection. It's selecting the hive which is able to produce better quality bees, uh, some, some uh, criteria, selection method. It's number one, the gentleness. Uh, this is not running on the frame. better wax builders. So, so these, these have to be put in, in, in the head and what, what, what kind of uh, uh, bees you are look, looking at, Italian, Cornelian, or whatever race, but you have to make a decision this year what we are doing in next year. Next year is coming. <coughs> the condition of the hive, the condition of the of the, the conditions, the weather conditions, high population, health conditions, and all of the considered. And uh, when you are ready, you have to increase, stimulate the hive population. It's very important when you have a two-story hive and you have only half story, bees in it, you cannot split it. So that is nothing but preparation. You have to get ready the hive to split it. Okay? And when you're ready for that, you... The splitting hive, it goes more than one way. But what you guys did it in the first place, that's the easiest one. Walk away. Walk away with one hive, and other hive is that there, but you have to have eggs in each chamber because you don't know where is the queen. So where is the queen? Naturally, that is just go through, and other ones make sure you have eggs, and they're able to raise their own queen. So you're talking about a walk away split. Walk away split. That's the video he's referring to where you have a two box hive, and you literally take one off. You look in the hive, it has brood chamber across the two boxes, but you don't know where the queen is. You set a bottom board over on the other side, and you take the top box, and you put it on the bottom board, and you put a roof on it, and you walk away. Walk away, split. If there's, there's a queen in one, and if there's eggs in the other, they will raise a queen in the other. That's what he's discussing. The full time frames. But both, both, yes. both section, both bugs, you have to have eggs. Mm -hmm. okay? Because the larva is just not enough. Because nobody knows that the larva age. The larva, 24, year, 24 hours larva, can be converted or to, to the queen. But otherwise, when it's 36 hours, only hour, we talk about hours now. And if you, uh, um, 
36 hours, you, the, the bees cannot raise the good queen out of it. Right? The other thing, when you're moving that box, and the larva floating in a royal jelly, and when you drop it, put it down, in a royal jelly from the cell, okay, that larva moves. Okay? You get out from the original position, and the bees <coughs> cannot accept. So even though everything is there, still not working. Mm -hmm. So these are fine details, but you have to be very, very careful. That, uh, uh, the queen rearing is a highly sensitive, hygienic uh, uh, activity in, in, in the bee business. So this is not enough just do something, they have to do it right. When this happened, 13, 16 days later, the queen emerged. Okay. The queen, when it's in a cocoon, when in a cell, the beehive cannot be moved. Have to stand still. In a cocoon, the queen is head down. Right? That's the way they develop. Right? If you move it, in a cocoon, okay, the queen slide down and hang up on the shoulders and the, and the wing shoulders and that's the last time the queen is developing the wings. So the, one of the most important, even the queen is not a flying machine, okay, but she has to fly out, has to mate, and if she cannot fly out to mate, this is that thing. All of the work is done for nothing. Mm. Right? Mm. So that is the sensitivity, even that simple, mm. but have to be accurate and have to be time error. When you made a split 30 days later, exactly can go back, okay, you have to find the laying queen. If you don't find the laying queen, one more week and done. That time is run out on that queen, queen and you have to do something about it. have to dissolve that section that, that's good. That is uh, one of the walk away method and every beekeeper can do that. Every beekeeper just do it once a year, one hive. Okay? That the bees survive. Now the other thing is um, the timing. And we can do that. Only one time we can do that when the bees want, bees want to do that. That's <laughs> very simple. <laughs> Easy to dance if you have a music. <laughs> something <to dance>. <laughs> <laughs> if something is missing, it's, it's uh, so. <laughs> we talk about a little bit on. Um, When do you do it? When do you raise the best queen in your backyard? The best queen raised any place in the earth under swarm in pause. When a bee is ready to multiply naturally. But the beekeepers don't let to swarm it. So the beekeeper have to create an emergency situation. So the best queen swarm in pulse and an emergency condition. Every location, every beekeeper is in different location and every have a different time. Over here in North Jersey, where I live two weeks earlier, down Cape May two weeks earlier again. So we have no data on it. We cannot make it April 4th or May 10th. The bees telling you when it's ready. If you have a two-story hive, a bee is flying, lift up the hive, look underneath between the two hives, okay, and look for queen cups. Queen cups is a natural 
build up every spring and every hive, but in a different time, because one hive is different than to the other one. So you, you have 10 hives in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a hive, you cannot make it a, a 10 hives in the same time, because all, all hives is different. How different is all hives? Anybody know the beekeeper, beekeeper number three rules? Anybody heard about it? So you have uh, nine hives. Okay. You, they're applying the number three rules. What does it mean? One third of your hives, excellent. Second third of your hive, it's a medium. And the third third of the hive, you have to worry about. So when you make a decision which hive you're raising queen or want to split or multiply it absolutely positively, not the third one. You have to sacrifice the best one. And here comes the issue. When you do that year after year, you come to the inbreeding situation. Because the mother has a daughter, and a daughter has another daughter, and all of them is in one line. It became inbreeding, and for prevent that one, we every year be buying out from a different line. Buy a, buy a queen, put it in your baby yard, and the next year you're breeding from that, if that is suitable for breeding. Or that queen is used, that queen, uh, uh, hive used for a, uh, a drone mother. Drone mother. What's happening with the drone mother? The queen is flying out and meets up to 20 or more. Some bee researchers find that 29 different drones. That's a well made at queen. No question about it. The drone mothers, the drones carrying 100% of the mother queen gene because it came out from the unfertilized eggs. Okay? So here to come the issue when we can talk about the, the queen became a drone layer. Wow. That somehow misspelled or misunderstood the queen naturally a drone layer. But the queen has the ability to fertilize the eggs. Okay? So we have to be careful not to inbreed, but in, in our area, when one uh, beekeeper, bees fly to other beekeepers, not an issue, but keeping a good line, that's a very, very important. How much time do we have? Um, Keep going. <laughs> you go, oh, go, oh. Keep going. You got plenty of time. All right. I'm going to put in my thinking. Let's see. What we not cover? Okay. The beekeeping look like a spider web. Every corner is connected to the other corner. If we go around in a spider web, we go around all of the zigzags that can go back to the same place. So when we have missing something, um, not connected, if we make a very little mistake. So it's very important to, to um, read. And this is one of the book, Contemporary King Reading by the end. I'm going to pass it through. Funny bucks, worth it every penny. If you if you raising queen or not make any difference. That is a book. You have to page it and have to study it. The page that is mean, read it at least 20 times. And be on the reach all the time you get it, and many answers in it, and what you never ever think about to ask a question. But it's a very, very good book. So we have a time, we like to go to a little bit farther. I told you. The beekeeping is like a spider where we go around and go around and you always can get back in the same place. And uh, the more defined the walkway, 
split. And many people is called many things, but I, I, I call that something else. The beekeeper is designing, make more bees, increasing the hives, <coughs> do some more sophisticated work in it, to stimulate brood rearing in the early spring, has a capacity to find a queen, where is the queen, right? When you're a two-story hive, and you have seven, eight frame of brood, at that time, it's very difficult to find a queen. Even for me, it's not so easy. But we, we have all of the hive equipment is tools. Doesn't matter what you have. You have a small box, access form, high body or high body. You make a two-story hive, big hive, when you go through and don't find a queen, make a three-story hive with the same frames. Leave alone the bottom, in the second story, five frame in one box, five frame in the other box, so make a three store. And between each hive, okay, you put a queen as food. Two, three hours later, come back, you will find a queen. <laughs> Please, choose bees, which is not aggressive. More smoke you use, less chance to find a queen. I don't use whale, I don't use gloves, and I give a puff of smoke only for the guard bees, and, and the bees stings me. Like it or not, sometimes I get a sting, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. And you find the queen. Put the queen in a separate box, one frame of silk brood, one frame of open brood, and from the original hive, from the open brood, take at least two shakes. So two frame of bees is one box and covered with bees. Now what you did? Many people call many other things, so I call that artificial swarm. I made artificially swarm the hive. Time matter. What's happened? What is the swarm issue? What kind of queen is lead the swarm? Young queen, mm -hmm. old queen, oh. old queen. I take out the old queen, right? They cannot swarm anymore because the old queen is out. And they're raising automatically their own queen. No swarm. A 20 queen cell, still no swarm, right? So you eliminated the swarm just removing the old queen, and plus, you don't have to climb up a tree to get the swarm. <laughs> <laughs> right on the, right on the floor, uh, level here, right over here. Yeah, but why do you have to go there? <laughs> Central Jersey, two professional, one is engineer, put a 36 foot ladder for a pine tree. The pine tree branch is gone, he is gone too. And he said, but I get a swarm. $60,000 medical bill. <laughs> and crippled the rest of his life. Both of them. Well, they call themselves uh, beekeeper, I call them idiot. <laughs> so that's the way to go. Beekeeper, managing the hives. Amateurs, beehivers, chasing the swarm. <laughs> Done. <laughs> That's simple. <laughs> All right. So what uh, else? I call that the rest last uh, situation in an artificial swarm. Artificial swarm. One time, in increasing your hives and preventing the swarm, and you save the honeycomb. Ah, one bullet, two birds. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Now, let's see, timing section. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. That's it. So, it's just about over in this one, but I'd like to tell a few things about who is decided or want to decide to go to the pin raving business. Need a college mm -hmm. education? Mm -hmm. Need to go to field uh, training for five years. Okay. When you decide to be comfortable, you need a financial backup. You need all of the equipment. Everything is ready. 
truck is ready, meeting looks is ready already. And I, I advise everybody for only one million working before you push the button to start the business. One thing is go to the pharmacy, buy a quart jar of paint reliever for headache, because a headache is start rising. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's very, very simple. But in our level, this level, what we have here, walk away, split is excellent. If you refine your skill a little bit, and you have extra boxes, extra equipment, you make an artificial swarm. Right? When you make artificial swarm, you see these twin cells, and your eyes, right away, like a register running, it's a one cell, two cells, you know, so many, so many uh, nooks or whatever, twins I can make it. Please don't get greedy. Because the first selection in queen, is start at the high. Because the best queen, the most energetic queen, is survive. So the selection starts right there. Don't worry about how many queens that you have, because you took out the old queen and they do not swarm. Mm. <laughs> Questions? What a, yeah. Did you mention the timing for the walk away? Is there a the time, the timing is every queen manipulation. So the, here comes the, I can add many other things when uh, you, you follow in this, in this uh, situation. <coughs> the timing is the best time. Swarm in pause, and you have to create emergency condition. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that mm -hmm. the swarming is inheritable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. that that conversation was for the walk away. Okay, I okay. got it. I got it. Be, yeah. Because the um, thank you. The, the, the swarm ming is inheritable. Yeah. So mm -hmm. more swarm, more swarm again. This is a key reality. So you can breed out your bees from the swarming habit. Okay. Or you, you, if, if you just let them to swarm, they swarm, and they swarm once, swarm twice, and how many times you swarm, that, ten, that many times costs you money. But if you create an artificial division, one way or other way, your skill and your time, because it's time, and, and you, you can avoid it, that's a beekeeping. It's a beehiver, you know, they're chasing the swarm, climbing the tree, like a, whatever. And uh, the, the, the beekeeper is managing their bees. Mm. Okay? And time, I, I, I understand it. So everybody has a job and kids and dogs and whatever, veterinarian space of the earth and pay mortgages. <laughs> so that's, I, I went through all of these questions. But rather you have less hive and manage it than more hive and every spring you're buying packages or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Sure. All right, when you get down to uh, your old queen, yeah. you got the, the hive, with the old mother, um, how likely are they to supersede her out? How no, long does she no, last? No, 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 but it's uh, superseding only if she's failed. You well, can you, keep... No, but you separate her. You wait till, let's say, the peak swarm time. You look around. You do your split. Yeah. Now you've got your new hive with no queen that's going to make a queen. Yeah. You've yeah. got the old hive with the old queen yeah. over here. Yeah. How long does she have? Do they, does she go on like nothing happened? Yeah, 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 she can go over two, three years, depend on the queen condition. Okay. Uh, the queen can live uh, three years, four years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but usually, like if you have uh, three hives and uh, you have a number three rules in a beehive, when you have uh, the third one, is just limping, okay? You can combine the old queen with that hive which is not making. Okay? But the, the, the problem is comes when the inbreeding is occurs sooner or later, right? So uh, the, this situation, you buy the new queen from other sources uh, sooner or later, but uh, make sure when you buy the new queen, uh, the time will matter so that we, 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 we build up so over winter. I'm a beginner, but I have a, I have a question. Having been through a late supersedure in August, yeah. where I lost an entire 
brood cycle. Are you at an advantage? Is supersedure not disadvantageous if it comes earlier, like in June or July? But the supersedure situation is occurring when a queen is failing and the bees notice that before the beekeeper notice that and supersede her. Yeah. So exchanging, there's, a, there's a not, uh, no advantage and disadvantage and this because only the bees is know that. No, no, I know that. What I'm, what I'm asking is, is it better to have a supersedure earlier in the season where it affects no the population? No supersedure better anytime. They all are bad. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a twin okay. failure. That was so, my conclusion because you've lost an entire brood cycle and you're at a serious disadvantage while the super, the 30 days or whatever for super procedure. Um, it's gonna be difficult, if not impossible, to get your population back up. That, that's right. But you see, and that's when, what I'm facing. When, when, yeah. when you have a, when you have a, that's a, a good question. Uh, maybe we change a page and I go back uh, to different, well, one second. Um, what was, uh, how can I approach this? What no supersedure is a good situation. When you make a split and the bees is raising their own queen, okay, that's a 30 days when the new queen yeah. start to uh, <coughs> functioning, but they have at least six or seven silk brood, okay? Each brood, each cell, when the bees is coming out, taking up three bee space, three cell space. Yeah. So, uh, one uh, fairly full uh, uh, frame uh, can have uh, 4,000 4, bees. Three frames fill up one box of, uh, uh, one box of uh, with bees. So here comes the, the situation. You, when you made the split, okay, three frame with the old pin is out, but 25,000 bees, 25, bees is emerging in a different stage. So the, 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 the main uh, uh, hive do not suffer. Okay? You take out less bees than the swarm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? And that is, uh, the, for an original hive, is no suffering whatsoever. Only one thing, good thing is happen. They have a new queen. Queen. Charlie. We have a lot of new beekeepers. Mm -hmm. Every year we get new ones, new ones, new ones. And everybody wants to see the queen. So yeah. they buy a package, they buy a new call for you or wherever they get them. And uh, they put the bees there, and then three or four days they don't let the queen come out. They open it up, and they want to look for the queen. And they're still in the cave. That's a mistake. mistake. All these young beekeepers and new beekeepers, what you do, mm -hmm. when you get a package or a nuke or everything, put her in there and let her go and don't bother her. Right. Don't open up the hive and to pull a frame out and all of a sudden you injured or damaged that queen. That's right. If you hurt her leg, her antenna or anything else, they know they're going to supersede and make another queen. That's and right away they're going to throw that one out and make another one. So there you yeah. go, you're going to set everything you're back 30 days. Right. And this is the prime time. You're early in the spring. they got all that time to build up. So that's one of the disadvantages when you get in there. Don't open up that hive this once or twice a week and want to see the queen. If you see eggs and brood and the colony is active, look at the entrance, you see everything going on, fine. If your dwindle goes down, you don't see much activity, hey, get in there and then take a look. Very gently, minimum amount of smoke, and one frame at a time. I usually take one frame out, not the first one, but the second frame, because right. it's attached to the side. Right. I take that second frame out, either left or right, right, very gently take it out and look at it. In 20 seconds, you should see if the queen is on that frame. Yeah. Just scan it. And if not, I take that frame and set it on the side. Now I have room that I can manipulate that hive and push them apart with the hive tool, break off the poplar, and gently, one frame at a time, take them out and look at them, right, if you want to do that. And the minute you see yeah. all eggs the stages, you're done. You see all of yeah. put them back, don't disturb them anymore. They're fine. You mm -hmm. see eggs and larvae, you see royal jelly, fine, right? That's a mistake that, a lot of new beekeepers uh, yeah. make. The beekeepers. Years, and I keep telling them, don't open up that hive every week or twice a week. You're just sending them back another whole day. You know? And you're going to damn get queen? That's your mother. Without her, you got nothing. Right? And you go down and you crash. 
then they're going to make super seizures and you just go crazy. Yeah. The beekeepers mm -hmm. doing the hive manipulation, 10% of the hive manipulation killing the queen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So that's that. When, good. Go ahead, go ahead. when, when um, <coughs> you open the hive, <coughs> make sure, and you take out the frames, <coughs> don't put in the ground. So I have always a loop box with me, screen bottom. If accidentally the queen is fall down, I can see it. Yeah. I can put it back. Yeah. Yeah, but to put enough frames here and there, and many beekeepers put in the legs and all over, and smoker between the legs, and everything else, and waste of the turf. But when kids get lost, it's lost, it's done. Yeah. You have 30 days set back right away in just uh, because you are manipulated and curious and you don't know, many people is just careless or just don't know how to do it the battery. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes? Mm. When, when do you start the uh, stimulative feeding? Uh, well, uh, I grew up in an area when we had a spring honey flow and our spring honey flow, honey flow was mostly black locusts and the best one. We, we start to feeding, feeding uh, stimulate brood rating eight, nine weeks earlier. It doesn't matter when is your area, you have to understand your area. People is calling me, when you can do this? I, I, I don't know. What do you think about my height? I cannot see your height. I don't know. <laughs> you know, this kind of thing. <laughs> when you say stimulate, are you asking nature to use the nectar flow or what? No, it's not stimulation. That's natural. Natural stimulation. That's natural. Doesn't matter how you feed. It doesn't matter what you feed. The matter is how often you feed. The portion control is a more important thing. We are stimulating, brooding, for the queen to keep going, not to put the food in the cells. Doesn't matter what you feed, corn syrup, sugar syrup, honey, whatever you feed, just feed a certain amount of day. Right now, if you have a full frame of a full hive box, <clears throat> the portion is one quart of day per hive. The bees take two quarts or three quarts, but you don't want to store sugar syrup. Mm -hmm. You want them to work ahead, use that for energy in the morning, go out and get honey and, and uh, 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 nectar and put in the side. That's the stimulation. Okay, I'm feeding my bees. For five pound uh, jars with one hole, one four penny nails of size of hole, one, right? And they build up and nicely because the queen has to have a certainty the food is coming in. Stimulation, so people said it's okay, I have many frames from last year, I put it in and that's get good for them. I don't lose for it. <laughs> Bad, big time. Why? The sealed honey for emergency. Okay? It's not for stimulation. Okay? You scratch up the hive on a frame, one side, put it on top of the inner cover with a honey super, and the bees come up and take it down. Okay? Portion is a very important thing. We are have uh, CDs in a bank, all right? Extra money, put in the bank, and seal it down for three years, whatever years, some emergency came up, and you go back to the bank, and you want to take out your money, all right? When you go to the bank, and you give a handshake to the banker, and almost kiss you, love you, <laughs> when you go back to break up, he treated like you're a criminal. That's your money. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put it this way, the silk honey is CDs in the bank. The bees is breaking up only emergency, but do not stimulate brood rate. <clears throat> Very simple. Mm -hmm. So mm. this time of the year, if you're going to stimulate your hive to try to get winter bees, because you're like in his case, behind the eight ball, or you have a high level of mites, and you treat it for the mites, you knock the, but your bee population needs to be built up for winter. 
use how much? Charlie, uh, the story is like a spider web. One connection, one thing is connected to the other thing. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, we talk about might. It's a completely <coughs> different concept. Well, we're not really. We're talking about getting the bee stimulated to raise new brood. The now might is nothing to do with the stimulation. Mm -hmm. okay. The stimulating new bees. Um, <coughs> well, you're saying let's assume the might is not a. Issue. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right, so let's get the mic thing off the table for his question. Yeah, but there's yeah. different circumstances why people... Is that possible? This is what we You just said a lack of population. Well, what do you do at this time of year? This time lack of year. population, that's a problem. Everybody calling me, in, in, in last week and this week, I get so many calls, <laughs> the similar thing, and I cannot have them answered because I cannot see their eyes. Okay. They, they call me, I have uh, plenty of bees, well, what's the mean of plenty? If you shake them up and <laughs> by pound is how much? Is, oh, I don't know, but lots of bees. I can't give any answer. <laughs> but the problem is, I go back to Charlie's might issue, the might, the problem, time for this one too, I, I talk about it a little bit. No, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah? Good. Go. Okay, <laughs> go. The might issue, how they're working then. Jeez. Everybody extracting the honey once a year. I don't know why. I used to extract every month. Whenever I have extra honey, I take it up because the honey is there. Don't do, silk honey don't do anything anymore. That's sealed and that's it. That's only on the way. If you are working with the bees, you have to lift it up, you have to put it back, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's, if it's yours, take it away. If it's the bees, leave it there. Honey flow, major honey flow, is stopped end of June, at least in my area. Mine, mine too. Right. What's happened in July? July is a month when the bee's life is shortest around the year. Bee's life in July, 32 to 35 days. What's happened? A mite is no which one is the young bees, which one is the old bees, because the young bees go to run close to the brood. The drone uh, population and the breeding is cutting down, and the mite is digging the brood cells, right? But the bees is dying sooner than usual. Shorter life, yeah. Shorter life, yeah. but the mite is done. What's happened? The bees' life is going down, the bees' population is going down. The mite number is don't go down, but the ratio is changed. Mm -hmm. right? Was 5% mite now, if you have 20% mite now. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Mm -hmm. Here comes the beekeeper. Take up the honey and the, the, the spring honey, all of them. Our location, my location, in the 4th of July, the bees is looking for nectar. They're searching, they try to rub, and a little bit nippy. In that time, we make a stimulation brood, stimulation feeding for brood. July, August, we raise up the hive population, a bee population, so therefore, we are do not raise or compensate the mite population, percentage wise. Okay? And when, uh, obviously, the best thing is uh, the treat for mite in, in, in first week in July, or middle of the July. Mm -hmm. Okay? Take out a, a, mite, a, a mite population as much as you can because the brood rating for drones that time is stopped. Okay. Up to that, uh, that point, uh, the mite is living in the, in the drone, drone mite. So that's a, we have to eliminate that one. So what we are doing, we are raising up the hive population okay, for, for a fall honey flow. So when the golden rod is coming out, like in the middle of the August or, or end of August, okay, we have a hive rich high population, 
and they able to gather their own honey. Remember, bees make raising more bees, and more bees making more honey. If it's not in a balance, okay, it doesn't matter what you are doing, but the timing is not right. So I, I, first I told you that the timing is very important. Timing is important for everything in a, in, in a, in a, in a, in a, a bee business. If you don't keep that, might as well just raise goat or pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's for that, uh, that question, the timing, stimulating bee, uh, thing, early as possible is better, but meantime, when you take up the honey, okay, you treat it for mite. Cut down the mite population. Um, many bee scientists think it's uh, the threshold, according to my book, one mite is too many mites, and, uh, but if you take out all of the mites, if you take out the ability of the bees to fighting the mites, yeah. no anti. Okay? If no mite, they, the bees don't build up nothing to, against the mite. That's a world issue, not New Jersey or Western bee. It's a world issue. Mm. Everybody should treat mild treatment, make sure the bees don't get muted or a mite don't get muted, and have some mites so the mite is able to fight and build up the system to against the mite. <coughs> Charlie, I got one question for you. On your research, uh, where did you come up with that 80%? 80%? Uh, that's a, uh, Lawrence O'Connor. Lawrence, 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 all right. Yeah, okay. I know. They, they, they made the research on this one. And uh, he made the research of the packages. They measured every package, how many ants, not how many pounds. Never mind. Uh, we are getting packages, uh, we are buying three pound packages and getting two parameters. I measure No one package from the Tony Hawk, the Tony uh, uh, package was three pounder. Yeah. Was the biggest was two pound and one ounce. Yeah. The rest of it was under two pounds. Mm. Well, I, have, I have a problem with that because I, I'm dealing with a breeder and he's always over the three pound package. Uh, that, that's, that's what I get it. Only, only, only this year I, I made research and, 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 and calculation and measurement and, and, uh, for, for the packages. That's that, it. Well, possible, possible is not stand for other breeders, but that one is definitely worth that way. And I am not alone. Yeah. Okay. Two, two guys, two guys, two guys measure the same thing. I'll call him up and I'll talk to him and if I don't see him. Uh, it's a, and, uh, you don't do nothing, that's what I do know. I have you make too much money, make too much money because the demand on it. Yeah. If you can cut down the demand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay, if everybody can, uh, reason I'm here, everybody can raise their own bees, no question. Okay? That's mm -hmm. simple. Simple step, you have to follow it. Okay? And you don't have to buy packages. Hmm. Yeah. I don't say that you don't have to buy queens or regenerate your stock, but, but that's unknown. I, I did it when I was 16 years old. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Yeah. Have to follow simple rules and, and you're done. Hmm. Time, of course time, you know. I, I know the issue. But, uh, have to go work and pay the mortgage and anything else that is the Mm. But, uh, but, uh, but, but the uh, weather, uh, again, you are a beekeeper or raise goats. Yeah. The weather is <laughs> something critical up here. You're Pardon playing, me? When you get them queens bred, when you're doing a whole bunch of queens. You know. But it's not called the in the stone. Some people have to make a one million get made And you got three or four days of rain and they come back, they're fully, no, fully mated. Right. And you've got a lot of supersedures that what you're going to wind up with. Yeah. The, well, the queen the breeders has, has, has no supersedures because they have a mating nose. Yeah. And 15 days later, two weeks later, they shake them out anyway and repair. Yeah. So that is not the issue. The issue is the, the, the bees, the queens, underdeveloped because they put in, in, a, in a hive to frame 45 in one frame and, and there's a 60, 70 queen cells. No way on the earth those, those, those hive can raise that queen cell, produce royal jelly. So the, the queen. First couple of days, when in a queen cell, if you're well fed, 
when, when, when the appetite is growing for the uh, larva, okay, they will underfed. So instead of they get a royal jelly, they get honey. Okay? But uh, you finish that book someplace, uh, I'd be like to show you something. Yes? Back to the mic, what do you believe is the best? I don't believe anything. Treatment. The beekeeper is the best treatment. I cannot give any advice because I give any advice and the person unuse it and they get call, call me back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's uh, the best thing is uh, go to the club like this club and talk with other beekeepers and share your information and, and get, get to it. The IPM management is the best what I practice. Okay, Use two, three times. I use cut out drones extensively. Mm. And more than one reason, uh, that way I can, I can control my stock. So undesirable hives, I cut out the drones, so that those drones cannot date with uh, mm -hmm. desirable queens. Mm -hmm. So that's a work, and uh, believe me, that work is underpaid. <laughs> so, so can you, by the way, IPM is Integrated Pest Management. Not, not a chemical route, in case anybody didn't pick that up. Um, can you talk about, you raise queens for sale. Yeah. You have to uh, start a queen in some manner. You have to get it to mate in your mating yard. And then you have to assure that the queen is of proper quality before you will sell it. Can okay. you talk about just a couple of the highlights on how you go about that and what's involved? So anybody who's never done that, which is the whole audience, maybe not. When we're raising the queen, how does this work? That's work very simple. Let's make the queen still expensive. Thank you. The queen is when made. Number one, I have to make sure the queen is made. So when it's made, I mark the hive nooks. All of my mating queens in a five frame nooks, it not necessarily has a five frame in it, but at minimum a two frame, but a full frame, right? <clears throat> when the reason I just run through all of the mating hives, if I find the unmated queen or no queen at all, I have to dissolve that because they turn to the vertical layer. How do you know so, she's made it? Does she look different when she's made well, it? Well, believe it or not, they behave different. Oh, how? They walk different, uh, under, under frame, run, okay, usually wings up, unhappy, unrelaxed, okay, and that queen is indicated for something is wrong with it. Right here. On top of the hive, I make a note, check mark, date, Queen, just a Q, and a big question mark. A date is there. The question mark is there. So I don't have a time to pamper every hive in the same time, in the same way. Okay, just I make, when I have a time, I come back. Okay, look it up. And if it's still not made it, I pick up my hive tool, throw her out. But she walks differently and she acts differently. That's how Absolutely. you can tell she's made it. Absolutely. She races around the frame. She runs radically. She's not. If she's made. Yeah. If it's made it, that's a calm way to do it. Now when she's, she's not made it. Oh, she's not made it. She's not made it. She's not happy. Yeah, let's she's make sure you get the right. Got it. I'm just curious. How can you tell the difference? So, what, 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 a mated queen has a purpose. An unmated queen is a nervous belly. That's how you can kind of remember. Hmm. Interesting. So what is, what, when it's done in a second run, when it comes to it, it comes to the physical <coughs> check of the queen. When it's, all of them is relaxed, all that's a mating, even you can observe it when it's de uh, depositing and in the cell. If you can see it. And how she can walk again, and uh, you have to check for a physical check. Make sure all of the legs in a proper position and that she's able to use it properly. Why is that? Because she loses using the legs when to back up in, in, in a cell and the depositing the eggs. Which eggs is not centered, okay? The queen is unfit. Mm -hmm. One reason or other reason you can find out. Okay? When you find the queen is running, 
Charlie is make a, a couple of photos, cut this on one of my twin, when a, when a twin the wing is a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. So the wing is shorter, she cannot fly. If she cannot fly, she cannot fit. Mm -hmm. So for for a for a inexperienced eye, that's a, I have a queen, okay, but she's useless. <coughs> when you find out when she's useless, we have already a drone layer. I mean a, a drone layer or a worker layer. Okay? So the 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 the, the, uh, the queen that nooks or hives or whatever go down the drain. You know, that's it, that's amen. That's you have to shake them out and have to restart. Quality of the queen. Now you know that you have a queen is right. You know she's walking right. Laying eggs right. Okay. How do you know that she is really right? <laughs> Every queen manipulation is going to feed the colony or the nooks. Every. Doesn't matter what you are doing with the queen, that hive must be fit. Before or after. You requeen the hive, must be fit. Before and after. Until that the condition is stable. Condition, condition, timing and timing. I can't talk about it because everything in beekeeping, timing and condition. Right? So I have a five fin looks now. Fairly populated. And I really like to find out what the queen is doing. Only one way I can do it, if I put in an old frame, one or twice is used in brood, brood, brood frame, it's not necessary all of the cells in the right location, or one of the cells has already piled in it, other cell is a little bit more bigger, or other cell was used for drone, or, or honey in it, so that's, that's maybe when you seal the seal brood, okay, it looks like a gunshot pattern, maybe. But it's not necessary, right? I'm feeding the bees continuously, one hole in a jar, and I put in a foundation. Oh, new foundation, new frame. All of the cells same. Mm -hmm. The bees at the queen love the new foundation. The cells drawn out a quarter inch or less, and the queen is laying eggs in it. And you're 100% sure you can see it in the bare eyes. You don't need a magnifier. When a, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a pattern is right, how she can lay eggs. The queen is laying eggs in a circle. Okay? Start in one point and go around, go around, and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And when you look at the, the <coughs> larva, couple of days old, you see the center is a bigger larva and goes out and out and out and gets more and more and more. <laughs> if the queen is missing the cells, you know that she underdeveloped and undermated. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. and that statement is good. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been, we've been going a while and I see people fidgeting, so I think we need to take a break. One, um, one more uh, thing. I why, love, uh, why don't we do this, Charlie? Can, we, can we bring you back for five yeah, minutes yeah, and I'm answer not. questions? We'll let everybody take a break. And then All right, we'll bring I'll, you back. I'll find a picture and Good. Okay. we come back to it. Take okay. a little break, everybody, and we'll come back with a lot of questions. And you should see that how the dragonfly is done. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, bees gone. <laughs> gone again. Yep. And but it's the cloud like a cloud. Because mm. it's the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. Wow. Mm. There is my place going. I'm <laughs> 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 right away. So any any question? European hornets too, you're seeing uh, right that's now. That's all wow. Wow. Yeah, but it's a different story. Uh uh Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Can you display the done? I, I can't. Cannot. Okay. But we can talk. To, we can talk to. Yeah. I can't. Talk, talk it now. Or we can't talk yeah, about it. Okay. Talk. <coughs> On this page, the queen reproductive system. 
uh, I want to, want to add this one to the queen quality. How we measure it. These lines and ovarius and ovarius is developing the eggs. Not rare, a good queen is can rear 3,000 eggs in 24 hours. Well developed queens. These ovarius <coughs> in a well developed queen must be over 128 ovarius. Under that is a pure quality, over 100, up to 290 ovarius, 298 or something like that, measured by scientists which are well developed. So how we measure that again? The egg laying capacity. Very simple. It's not simple, but you know. And uh, <coughs> this is a this one. This ball here is a spermatica. And the queen is storing the sperms from the drones. It is not accident, this is run. This is a globe. And how it's injected in the sperm that is turning. Okay? And mixing up. So that's the reason when we open the hive and the mixed bread, sometimes you see the yellow twins, sometimes the darker twins, and uh, all kind of var variation. So <coughs> it's, uh, and that's the reason also once we open the hive and uh, the bees is a little bit creepier than the other time. Because that drone that made it just came on the line to fertilize the eggs. In this spermatica, it can contain two and a half to three million eggs, sperm, to, to, to fertilize the eggs. When this spermatica is run out from sperm, a drone became a drone layer. Actually, when I talk about it, the queen is don't became a drone layer. The, uh, the queen was originally a drone layer. Just lose the ability to fertilize the eggs. That's two things, but uh, maybe a beekeeper terms that easier, oh, my queen is a drone layer. And uh, the ability of the queen, how they fertilize eggs, is when we see empty holes in the in the cells is not necessary is uh, the queen is miss that miss that cell just uh, just is unfertilized eggs and the queen is moving but the bees is moving so that is an indication of the visual inspection the queen is good or the queen is going up I remember one one thing Good queen always can turn to the bad queen. When you have a bad queen, <laughs> don't wait too long. <laughs> bad queen is never ever turned to the good queen. <laughs> <laughs>